This program is brought to you by Emory University. This project began with Falda's incredible map of 1676, which is beloved of architectural historians who work on the 17th century because of the incredible detail the map shows. Falda also, though he died very young, produced 300 plates showing perspectival views of various piazzas, churches, fountains in the city. So you have an incredible concentration of material produced by a single man in the span of about 19 years. So the idea was to take the map and the views and rebuild Rome in a virtual world. We had the software that we had already been developing, primarily used for gaming, and really meant for architects to see their buildings uh, in a way where you could walk around them. It seemed like a perfect fit. I like to think of the way he drew Rome as almost anatomical. He wanted to show you the buildings in such crisp detail that they were essentially being taken apart on the anatomy table. He's also working from previous map makers and he's building on their survey material and their contribution as well. As far as controls, we have a number of different ways of moving around. Some people prefer the gaming joystick. It allows you to move uh, forward and back, side to side. So one of them is moving, the other is looking. So you can see with the thumbstick, you can actually kind of do a full circular kind of view. Combine them and now you can move and look at the same time. So if you want to come up to something, it's pretty easy to walk right up. And then with the mouse, there's usually two buttons. On, the, on this particular one, it's one looks like one, but it is two. The left button similarly is looking. The right button allows you to walk and look. There's also a number of tools that sit up in the upper left corner of our screen uh, that allow you to bring up a map, for instance. So you can see a section of Falda's map and a little icon showing you where you're sitting within the map. So you can see the larger map, see your position within that entirety, or go back to a localized one of where you are. We have the ability to modify the lighting. So within here we have a sun, and grabbing that sundial will allow you to actually move it to any location you like. There are some sounds. These are three-dimensional sounds, so the closer you get to the source, the louder it becomes, the further away that it diminishes. We also have a photo album that you can then bring up and see the different views that were used to build this location. You can move around within the map. We have a series of preset locations that are the major piazzas. So there is this one button that's called the tour. And within there, then you have all the piazzas. What is very exciting for me as an architectural historian working with Eric and his team over here, architects, modelers, and so forth, has been the dialogue and what I've been able to learn about the possibility of reaching out to other people in my field, my students, my colleagues, to share this kind of virtual experience, which I think Falda would have approved of heartily, since I think in a way he was attempting to reconstruct in his map the Rome he'd been studying for 20 years. The exciting thing about the Envis 360 platform is that we can eventually communicate worldwide in our virtual creation. I could drop in in Atlanta and a colleague in Cambridge can drop in and a colleague in Italy can drop in and we can actually communicate in the space. One potential of this project is actually the three-dimensional modeling of buildings themselves. The one building you can walk into in the project is the Pantheon. But Envis 360 enables us eventually to take the layers apart and show the entire construction of the building. And that has huge potential for teaching and for understanding. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.